Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. I am going to walk you through a patient that has a cervical disc herniation. Now, all disc herniations can show up and present differently. I am always talking about disc replacement and the treatments that I'm recommending and using in my practice for patients that have neck and back problems. If you have followed me, you know I'm a big proponent of disc replacement, motion sparing surgery, really doing our best to avoid fusion surgery. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through some films on the patient. Hopefully, you'll uh, get a better grasp on what the symptoms can be if you're having a disc problem in your neck. Now, again, the, the spectrum can be very, very mild to just having neck pain. It can move all the way over to this uh, case that I'm gonna show you right now, which is really severe spinal cord dysfunction. So, disc replacement therapy can, can help with the full gamut of problems that, that patients can encounter. So I'm going to pop over to these films. You should be able to see this right now. This is pretty simple pictures. So zoom out a tiny bit here. This is the spinal cord, back of the neck. The, the chin is up here and the, uh, the mouth up there. These are the vertebrae. This is C2, 3, 4, C5, and C6. Now, obviously, I've got a major problem right here. You can see the center of this disc is gone. These discs are uh, quite a bit more healthy looking. This picture over here on the left that I'm now kind of hovering over is a top-down view of the spinal canal. I'll move up and you can see this cross-sectional line. This gives us a view of the C4-5 disc. That's the adjacent disc, one level above. So this is the cord. This white stuff around the cord is spinal fluid. Uh, and here you see this large fragment of disc is pushing and the cord is now kind of this banana-shaped, kidney bean-shaped type thing. And then once you get past that, it opens back up and the cord looks good again. But um, there's, there's even a little bit of uh, what we call cord signal abnormality present there. That's irritation of the spinal cord. We start to see dysfunction of the spinal cord when there's that much uh, compression. So what are the symptoms that this patient is having? Really quickly, he's 62 years old, otherwise pretty healthy. His primary symptoms, and he doesn't even know um, if, that they're from this disc herniation. So I start walking through them with him, and that's what I want to do for you. So... He's got a little bit of neck pain. This disc is eccentric to the right, and so he's having some right shoulder pain, some numbness down into his hands. Those things would point toward that disc, but when you have that much compression of the spinal cord, you start to have spinal cord dysfunction. So those symptoms we call myelopathy. Myelopathy presents with um, disc coordination. The back of the spinal cord is an area that uh, we call the posterior columns. It's really primary function is sensory and um, position sense in space. So the way I would describe that to a patient is, listen, you reach down in your pocket and you uh, grab for some coins. You've got a nickel, quarter, and a dime. If you have uh, proprioceptive, this, this proprioceptive dysfunction from a spinal cord compression, you might have a hard time telling which, which coin is which. Um, when you're walking, uh, you might have a hard time knowing where that next step is because you don't typically look down every time you take a step. Your, your brain, your eyes, your body, they just kind of sense it and you don't think about it. These are the typical involuntary proprioceptive functions of the spinal cord. And you start losing that when you have uh, compression of that area of the cord. So uh, a couple other things that I mentioned to him, uh, when, when he gets up at night and there's no uh, light in the house and he's trying to get to the bathroom, he's kind of banging into the walls and, and he finds that he's even more imbalanced. Uh, another common complaint that he also had is that when he's in the shower and he can't really see the horizon, again, more proprioceptive dysfunction, he kind of has to rest his hand on the wall or put his elbow in there while he's cleaning his hair. Those are very, very classic things. And so dropping items, holding a pencil, buttoning buttons, zippers, tying shoes, things like that, a little picking up a little like a coin off of a table, that might be hard for someone who is having uh, spinal cord compression. Uh, other symptoms that are uh, very common that, that patients typically will write off is I'm just getting old. They start losing urinary continence. What does that mean? It means you, you pee on yourself or um, have a hard time holding it, maybe getting to the bathroom, you, you know you need to go, um, but uh, or, or maybe even just wake up in your bed and, and you wet yourself. Those are not normal things uh, to have. And so if you ever start to develop those, you should really consult with uh, your doctor. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hand dysfunction, dropping things, discoordination, use of the hands, fine motor activities. If you were like, um, you know, someone that liked to uh, 
uh, build uh, or, or do fly uh, fishing lures, things like that that require a lot of little micro movements. You might have a hard time with that. Walking and balance. Now, when we do this gentleman's surgery, we're gonna we're gonna go in and we are going to remove this disc. We're gonna take all this compression off the spinal cord and we're gonna put an artificial disc in there. All of this is gonna be gone. And then when we're done, his disc is, uh, you know, his axial view of the spine is gonna look a lot more like this where the cord has got plenty of room between the spinal cord and, and the new disc replacement. So that's gonna be really good for him. I always promise my patients Listen, the goal of this surgery is to prevent you from getting worse. That being said, my experience is that you're going to get better. You, you're going to have better hand function. Your balance is going to improve. They usually notice a little jump in functionality right after the surgery, but then they could experience continuing improvement for up to 12 months after the surgery. At about 12 months, you're kind of 90% recovery. Typically, that's my experience. One thing that is uh, common that I really always like to stress to my patients is if you have this much compression of your, of your spinal cord and are starting to have spinal cord dysfunction, it is possible that you could have uh, some residual numbness. Some of that numbness that's there, I find is a little bit hard to predict whether or not that's gonna get better. We're really good at predicting when the sciatic or the nerve impingement pain is gonna get better, but this numbness, um, that's a little bit harder to predict. And it's it just going to take time. So I never promise that all the numbness is going to go away. In some rare cases, patients will say, yeah, you know, I felt a little bit of numbness and my strength is better and my balance is better, but I actually feel a little more numbness after the surgery. Now that can happen. It's a little bit uncommon, but when it does happen, I, I think it really honestly is just, uh, you know, there's, there's been an injury to the spinal cord from this disc herniation. And how long was that compression present causes you know, relates to, you know, the amount of permanent damage that's done. Hope this video has been helpful. If you're having any of these symptoms, you definitely got to talk to your doctor. You may need a spine surgeon. Um, if you're ever considering spine surgery, you want to ask important questions about disc replacement, whether or not you're a candidate. There's lots of nuances that go into it. You just want to make sure that your surgeon is very comfortable and very attuned to all those uh, different uh, details around when uh, disc replacement is indicated. Thanks. Have a great day.